Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. This podcast is sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought straight to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico. As you know, that's the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Here's a good question. The great state of New Mexico has 33 counties, of which 18 are named for actual people. How many New Mexico counties are named for United States presidents? Would you be surprised to know that it's five? Can you name them? Well, Lincoln County is easy because that's Abraham Lincoln. Grant County is U.S. Grant, and there's McKinley County, named for William McKinley. Roosevelt County is named for Teddy, not Franklin, but Teddy, and Warren G. Harding County. Here's a strange fact. Three of the five of those presidents died in office, and two of them, Lincoln and McKinley, were assassinated. Only U.S. Grant and Teddy Roosevelt finished their terms of office. Let's look at a New Mexico enchanting story. On the east side of New Mexico is Curry County. New Mexico, uh, that's the county seat with Clovis, is the Curry County. It's named for 17th Territorial Governor of New Mexico, George Curry. It's territorial because New Mexico wasn't a state yet. He was also a first member of Congress in the U.S. House of Representatives when we did become a state in 1912. Governor George Curry was appointed by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1907 and served until 1910. Theodore Roosevelt knew him because of the Spanish-American War. He was one of the 350 first U.S. volunteer cavalry. They called him the Rough Riders. He was born in Louisiana in 1861, came to Lincoln County in 1879 at age 18 after both parents had passed. So he was around for the Lincoln County Wars. A few years later, he was the Lincoln County Clerk and afterwards was the county assessor and later county sheriff. He was a sheriff just like Pat Garrett was a sheriff of Lincoln County. He was a member of the territorial legislature and was president of the territorial senate in 1896. Now what I find especially interesting is that upon being named governor of New Mexico uh, at this time in 1907, he bought not one but two 1907 Ford Model S Roadsters. Now that Model S was before Model T's. He bought one to drive and one for parts. The 15 horsepower water-cooled engine had two speeds forward and one in reverse. Seating was for three and a top speed of 45 miles an hour. There were about 5,700 of these made in the United States by Henry Ford before he started making the Model T. The Model S was the final right-hand drive car that was uh, produced by Henry Ford. A final note is there was only 15 miles of pavement in Santa Fe at the time, so it was always a spectacle when George Curry took his car out for a short but very picturesque drive. In this fast-paced world we live in, here's an interesting story. In 1857, a government contract was awarded to the Butterfield Overland Mail Company to deliver mail from St. Louis to San Francisco going through El Paso and Las Cruces. The contract stated it must be done quicker than the several months it was then currently taking. First time, it went 3,000 miles in 24 days. Now, ordering jars of chili from the Fresh Chili Company is ever so much faster and quite delicious, we might say. P.S. We use FedEx, UPS, and the post office, so the horses have been retired. Let's talk New Mexico birthdays. First up, someone born in Albuquerque in 1939. He was from an auto racing family. His son and brother were also Indianapolis 500 winners. He is a four-time winner of the Indy 500 and only the third racer to do so. At age 82, he passed on December 9th, 2021. We wish a happy birthday to Al Unser Sr. 
Thanks for all the great racing moments and for bringing us Al Unser Jr., also a great racer. Also born in Albuquerque is TV actor Nick Welshler, who is best known for being in the drama series Roswell. He left Albuquerque right after graduating high school and spent nine months trying to land a role. I bet those were nine pretty tough months, but he did. And he was on the TV show also, Malcolm in the Middle. He has seven brothers. Think of that. At mealtime at the family dinner table, seven boys. Whew. I bet they all like green chili. I have two other notable people, both born in Albuquerque. One was a U.S. senator, the other a Pro Football Hall of Fame defensive back who was a 10-time NFL Pro Bowler, was the winning side several times in the Super Bowl. There is not that many former U.S. senators, so I bet you already guessed that that's Pete Domenici. The other birthday is Ronnie Lott from the San Francisco 49ers. Pete Domenici, incidentally, this is an interesting part. He was an athlete and was a pitcher for the Albuquerque Dukes, the minor league team. Pete also taught mathematics at Garfield Junior High School in Albuquerque before going into politics and being the last Republican to be elected to the U.S. Senate from New Mexico. Now, lots of people saw the landing of the Space Shuttle Columbia in 1982 at the Missile Range's Space Harbor over what was then called Northrop Strip. It's an old lake bed that was selected for the backup shuttle landing, backup, backup, actually, shuttle landing, because it had to be 35,000 feet long for the space shuttle to be comfortable landing there. The space shuttle was already landing in California, and they had just started a, a runway at Kennedy Space Center, 35,000 feet long, and they wanted one more place just in case, and it happened. There was rain in California and rain in Florida, so the only way down for the Columbia was New Mexico. Initially, it was a drone area, but the name changed when the space shuttle Columbia landed, and yes, I was there and took picture of I even have pictures of a crane putting the Space Shuttle Columbia back on the 747 to fly it to the Kennedy Space Launch Facility. Rumor has it that the one that landed in New Mexico, the 747, still has gypsum in it, and they cannot get it. Every time they turn around, there's little bits of gypsum still in the airplane. At least that's what I've heard. May 1970 was when Northrop area got the start. They were testing a one-tenth size model of the space shuttle, dropped it from 8,000 feet to see how it could be controlled. It was, um, the wingspan was, eight, it was 13 feet, and it worked fine, and that's when it was put into operation. And in 1976, the shuttle pilot training started in our area. Now for the rest of the landing story involves the day that the space shuttle Columbia was supposed to land. But it was an awful weather day with 50, 60 mile an hour dust and just awful weather. The news media wondered aloud how we all could live in such an awful place. But get this, the next day was a typical beautiful New Mexico morning, spring morning. About 70,000 people, of which I was one, was there to watch the landing. Now, according to the New Mexico Game and Fish Department, fishing is fair this week at Elephant Butte and Caballo for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, along with walleye and catfish. I've been told that fishing for catfish is very good when you are using raw shrimp at the marina. Remember, if you have some fresh-caught fish, a few spices, and some good green chili you make for a great dinner. But there's more to the story. Here is an opportunity for culinary fame. Take a picture of your freshly caught and then cooked fish dish with the Fresh Chili Company seasoning, be it dry rub or salsa, submit it to us and you can be one of the cooks in our cooking session. Uh, upload your pictures on Facebook and tag the Fresh Chili Company or ask to join our private group called Fresh Chili Cooking. You can upload then. Someone asked the other day, what's the simplest recipe that uses Hatch Valley chili? Well, I open a jar, I take a chip, I dip it, I eat it, and I repeat. 
<laughs> yeah, well, here's one of the recipes from the Fresh Chili Company website. It was created by Fresh Chili Company's own Chris Lang, who is a Fresh Chili Company partner and owner and founder of Oregon Mountain Outfitters. It is an appetizer that I like. Spicy baby carrots. Prep time, five minutes. Takes 10, 15 minutes to cook. Total, 20 minutes. Serves eight people, about 100 calories per serving. The ingredients are three tablespoons of raw mesquite and wildflower honey or hatch hot honey. I like the hot honey, sweet and spicy. Three tablespoons of hatch chili Dijon mustard. On third cup of olive oil and three pounds of baby carrots, salt and pepper to taste, whatever you like. You boil the baby carrots in a pot of water until they're tender. That takes about seven to ten minutes. Drain the water, set the carrots aside. Make a glaze on medium heat in a pan. Heat it with the oil, fresh chili honey, or the and then put the Dijon mustard in it in this large skillet. Stir in the carrots, coat well with the glaze, salt and pepper to taste, and that recipe by Chris Lang. This is the Fresh Chili Company podcast. I'm Michael Swickard. I've been asked, have you eaten Hatch Valley Green and Red Chili all your life? And I always answer, not yet, but that's the plan I have. A little chili is good and more chili is better. I tell people we have to take care of the water in the Rio Grande River for without the water, they won't have any green chili, probably wouldn't have any coffee either. One thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces is they can come by the Fresh Chili Company a gift shop. It's located at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite uh, D7A in Las Cruces. It is open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's no need for shipping when you live close. You can look at each jar and go, yum. But if you're living far away and you need to ship, if you buy 12 jars, we offer free shipping. If you live in the lower 48 states, that excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Stock up and make sure you have plenty of that, which makes everyone smile. Hatch Valley Red and Green Chili. And a case of that delicious chili would make a great present to somebody who moved away and still has a taste for Hatch Valley Green and Red Chili. Also, if you buy three jars, we will donate one jar of our award-winning Mama's Salsa to a local food bank in New Mexico called Casa de Peregrinos. They provide school lunches and they provide for those in need in the community. Now in 1895, the second graduating class of the college in Las Cruces, it's now known as New Mexico State University, but that second graduating class in 1895 set a mark for the number of graduates that will likely never be eclipsed. There was one graduate. <laughs> and, of course, she was the valedictorian. Was there a surprise? No. Jessie Edna Cassad, who read from her senior thesis to the audience for the graduation, her thesis was The Wild Bees of Mesilla Valley. Now, she's interesting for a couple of reasons, besides being the only graduate in 1895. She married Clarence Rhodes, He's brother of the famous Western writer Eugene Rhodes, and they ran mining operations in Mexico for about 30 years. And, of course, there was no suspense at all who was going to be named valedictorian in 1895. It was Jesse Edna Cassad. It certainly was. This is Michael Swickard with the Fresh Chili Company, brought to you by... The, this podcast is brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We will always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico for you on this podcast. If you have something you want me to talk about in history or agriculture, uh, you can send a, a message to michael at freshchilico.com. Fresh Chili Co. is all written together, no dots until you get to .com. So michael at freshchilico.com. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, and eat plenty of good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili's good, more is better. Bye for now.